Welcome to the quick start video for Crush FTP. I'm going to walk you through some of the basic steps of Crush FTP to get a user set up, uh, forward some ports on your router or firewall, and then log in and uh, do some file transfers. We're going to start by opening up the Crush FTP application. The first time you run it, it's going to warn you that you need to give permissions to Crush FTP to be able to use ports below 1024. This is a OSX security feature. So go to the OSX tab, let's click on Authenticate Crush FTP, and enter in your OSX admin password. Crush FTP will then restart, and in uh, 10.6 Snow Leopard, it's going to make you re-authenticate every single time you open it. It's a new feature from Apple. So now when Crush FTP opens, it's no longer giving any errors about the ports being in use or the ports uh, needing permission to run, but it's available and ready for people to start logging in. The first thing we need to do is make a user. So we're going to go into the Edit Users and Groups, and this pulls up the User Manager. And right now we're editing the group of users called Main Users, and there's a default user and a temp account in here. The default user is a required account, um, can't be deleted, but you can edit it. So let's make our user in here. We're going to make a new user called My User. We've got our first user here called My User. Let's give the password for My User. Uh, let's make it the same My User. And we need a place for My User to be able to log in and be able to transfer files. So I'm just going to create a, a new folder here on my desktop called FTP users. Inside this folder I'm going to make a folder for my user. Let's make a folder for Ben. So we've got a couple users that, that we'll be able to create here. But I want to make my user have access for this folder. So I'm going to take my user and I'm just going to drag and drop it in here. There we go. And you can decide what permissions you want to give to the folder. And I want to allow my user to have basically full control over their home folder. So I'm going to give them upload, delete, delete folder, create, rename, um, share, and slideshow. You don't want to click make invisible. If you click make invisible, they won't be able to see anything because it'll all be invisible here. So these are the basic settings we need to be able to log in. So let's click save changes and my user is now ready to log in and, and see their files. But if we look in the my user folder, there's no files in here. So let's take a file and, and just put a file in here so my user actually has a file. So I got a picture sitting here I'm going to drop in there. So my user has a file that we'll see in there. Now I'm going to use an FTP client to log in and take a look at uh, my user's files. I'm going to use Cyberduck here. So open up the FTP client and let's type in the address to our server. I'm going to use the local host IP um, just to simplify things for right now so we don't have to worry about any uh, port forwarding or firewalls or anything like that. So let's type in FTP colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 and username is going to be my user password my user login And here we are. And here's that one image that we already copied in here uh, for my user. So you can see that there's one there. Let's go ahead and add another one in here. So we're just going to drag and drop. And if we look in the folder, we now see that there's two images in here. So we're transferring files using FTP using the user that we just created. That, that's how easy it is to set up a user in Crush FTP. Let's try using another protocol. So that was just plain FTP, which isn't always secure, um, but we can make it secure. Let's go to FTPS. And now we just logged in using uh, FTP over SSL, which is a secure way to transfer files. 
let's try yet another method. Let's try SFTP. Now for SFTP, Crush FTP has a port that's listening for SFTP, but it, by default it's on port 2222, which is not the standard port for SFTP, so we have to specify it in here. Let's log in here. It's asking if we trust the server. We're going to allow it. Let's log in with the same username. And here we are again, the two files that we have in there. So that's how easy it is to set up a user. Uh, we just used uh, three different protocols to be able to see the files that the user uh, has in its directory. Now I'm going to pull up a web browser and show you how to use the web interface to look at these same files. So let's go to our server which is http colon and it's on port 8080 by default. You can change it to be any port that you like, but it's on port 8080 by default. And here's the login page to log in and see the web interface. So I'm gonna log in as my user. And first, I'm gonna show you what the HTML interface looks like, then we'll log back out and we'll log in to show you what the Flash interface looks like. So let's click login. And here we are, we just logged in, and here's the two files that we've uploaded uh, into this user's account. If we want to upload another file, let's go to Browser Uploader. And we've already got two of those images there. So let's see, 432474, or 334 is the, the missing image. So let's click on Open and Start Uploading see a quick little progress bar if we refresh there we are we now see all three images have been uploaded in there if we want to delete one of these images we can click the delete and now that image is gone so that's the HTML interface of uh, the web interface so Let's go to logout and let's log in using the Flash interface, which has uh, some nicer features here. Let's log in as my user, my user, and Flash interface login. So the Flash interface is coming up here, and here's the two images that we have in here right now. I want to upload that image I just deleted uh, from the HTML interface, so I'm going to go to the upload. Browse for files, select, start upload. And there's the upload. Now in the Flash interface, you can do quick filtering. So if you had a big list of files and you just want to see image 4334, as you start typing it, it filters it down and shows it to you that way. Uh, the Flash interface can also do thumbnails on the images. So if we go back to Crush FTP and we go to its preferences here and let's go to preview, we're going to enable thumbnail previews. We're going to set the scan interval to be one, number of conversion threads four is fine. I'm going to change it to one for right now. And we're going to handle any supported file extensions that Mac OS X can handle. And let's add in a folder that we want to have scanned. So let's go to FTP users. Let's pick this folder. And I'm going to hit OK. So if we look at our log, we can see that it's processing the images that we've uploaded so that they'll have thumbnails now. Okay, now if we hit the refresh button, now we see miniature thumbnails of all the images that we've uploaded. And if you want to see a larger thumbnail, just double click and you can see a quick preview of the images that are here. Additionally, uh, there's a slideshow functionality, so we can click on slideshow and we can see images in a slideshow format.
If we wanted to search for an image, there's an interface for searching for images. We can change the size of the listing of, so we can see larger thumbnails. We can go to a thumbnail view that just does a, a different style layout for them. Um, there's a lot of functionality you can do in here. If you had images that you've uploaded and you wanted to share with somebody, you could right click on the image, say share, and then fill out a form for who it's going to. And if you want them to see the flash interface or if you want them to see the HTML interface, you can choose that here. How long till the images expire? Um, and then click send and it'll use your your preferences that you've set in Crush FTP to send emails. We haven't set those preferences yet, so let's come back to Crush FTP. Let's click on Edit Settings. We're going to go to the General Settings tab. And here's where you would fill out your SMTP server information. So I'm going to do smtp.gmail.com Username Whether it requires SSL or TLS, um, you'll have to refer to your specific uh, ISP for who you're using to send emails to know whether you need that or not. That, that's how you configure the email settings. So then we come in here and we can click send. And it'll give you the information and a link that you can use to log in and see those photos that you've shared. Now the last part I'm going to show you is how to um, configure your router to allow it incoming access to your server because by default your router is not going to be allowing the ports that you need to be able to get to your server. So from your web browser, uh, most routers have a web interface for configuring them. You come in here and I know that my router is uh, 192.168.1.1 and here's a router configuration page and I'm going to go to the, in, in my particular router, to the, the NAT tab, which has the port forwarding, which is what I'm looking for. And I want to add in a few ports here. So I'm going to add in port, let's call this FTP, and we're going to do from port 21 to port 21, and we're going to send it to my internal IP. And I'm not sure what that is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my system preferences, We're going to go look at the network. And my IP is 1.141. So I'm going to come in here and do 1.141. So that's that's my IP inside of my network behind the router. The router has its own IP, but this is my IP inside the network. And port 21 again. And then we also need to have a web port. We're going to do port 8080. Same IP. Again to 8080, and let's enable both of these, and this time we're going to click Apply. So now we have two different ports that are coming in from the outside to allow access to our server. And if we go check in our server here, we can see that these ports match up in here. So our FTP port is running a lookup and lookup means all IPs that are on this machine so you don't need to type anything in here you should leave it at the default to look up and not make any changes there but port 21 is what port we're running our server on and it's providing FTP access and our router is FTP aware most routers are um, if they're not you can turn this off and you can type in a, a different port if you need to and then here's our web port which is Again, look up. You don't need to set an IP there. You can leave it at its default. The port number was 8080, and it's providing web access, and that's the port number we've configured there. So that's how you can allow access uh, on your router for your different ports. Every router is going to have a slightly different interface. Um, this is a Netgear router with a custom firmware on it. Uh, it just depends on your router and how they configure it. But what you're looking for is port forwarding or port range forwarding but you're not looking for port triggering. Port triggering is something else entirely. You're looking for port range forwarding or port forwarding. So this concludes our uh, quick start video on how to set up Crush FTP and get logging into it, creating users, uh, setting access, using the web interface, just a, a general overall, 
all guide of how to use the basic features in Crush FTP. There's plenty of other videos that are going to go into more detail on specific features. Um, feel free to check them out as well. Thank you.